What's going on guys, PC here. In this video I want to talk a little bit about a Dreamcast that I recently customized and modded. Now this is something that I've never done before, but the opportunity came about when I bought a couple Dreamcasts on eBay for $15 in free shipping. Now granted both of these Dreamcasts were broken, but even so, this was an absolute steal. $7.50 a piece. I just could not pass that up. So I ended up getting these Dreamcasts in the mail, and one of them I noticed was extremely yellowed. It was really badly yellowed and just looked terrible. And so I thought this was the perfect opportunity to do a custom paint job. So I ended up doing that, and this is the result. As you can see, I ended up doing a silver and black paint job, which is inspired by my favorite limited edition Dreamcast. Now this isn't exactly the same as the official one. I mixed things up a bit. Uh, the official one has a silver body and I think a black lid and black controller ports and I did the opposite here but I think it came out really nice. I did a matte black finish instead of the glossy black which I think looks nice. Uh, unfortunately regular spray paint tends to scratch really easily so that's the only thing I regret about this. If I were to do it again I'd probably use uh, maybe car spray paint. A lot of people I've noticed do that, but obviously it's a lot more expensive and uses special equipment. But uh, for a cheap paint job, I think it came out really nice. It looks nice, it's just really fragile. I have to be careful not to scratch it. I actually find myself touching it up a lot with a Sharpie, which isn't exactly ideal, but yeah, I mean, it looks nice, which is cool. I just have to be very careful with it. So I didn't stop there, I wanted to take it a little bit further, so I installed a region-free BIOS chip. I actually have a region-free BIOS chip in my main Dreamcast, but I didn't do it myself, I had someone else do it. This is the first time I've installed a region-free BIOS chip myself, and it actually worked out well. It worked the first time I put it in, which is cool. And I, I thought that was really cool, and I could play games from any region on that Dreamcast, which is really cool. But I did not want to stop there. I wanted to take it even further. I wanted to take this thing to the limit. So I ended up doing a hard drive mod, otherwise known as an IDE mod. Now, a lot of you may not have actually heard of this, and that's because it is, a first of all, a very difficult mod to do, and secondly, a lot of the information about the IDE mod is in Russian, which definitely does not help. Now, there are other solutions out there, like the GDMU or the USB GD-ROM, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. But unfortunately, those solutions are very expensive, and in the case of the GDMU, it's very hard to get a hold of. The guy makes them in small batches, and they sell out extremely quick, and I mean within minutes. So it's very hard to get a hold of a GDMU, and the USB GD-ROM is the most expensive solution, close to $200, which... Yeah, I, I would not pay that much. I might pay for a GDMU, and I have thought about it at at uh, one point, but it's it's $130, which isn't terrible, but still pretty expensive. And like I said, it's just really hard to actually get one. So what I ended up doing with this Dreamcast is the IDE mod. Now this is, I guess you could say, the poor man's version of the GDMU. But it's extremely cheap. You can literally do this mod for under $10. The only thing you really need is an IDE cable, which you solder directly to the underside of the Dreamcast motherboard. Now, this is, like I said, a very difficult mod to actually do. And if you don't have advanced soldering skills, you don't even attempt to try it. Don't, just don't do it. <laughs> so, all these wires, these very, very small wires, have to be soldered to the underside of the motherboard, all in very close proximity to each other. So you have to be very, very careful not to cross any of the wires. So with my particular IDE mod, I did not do what most people do, and that is cut a hole in the Dreamcast and have the IDE cable come out of it, which is just not very elegant, and I personally refuse to cut a hole in a Dreamcast case. It's just, I, I just will not do that. So what I ended up doing with mine is made it completely internal, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this before. Basically, I took the IDE cable, and I have it come up the side of the motherboard and there's just enough space to come up and around and to where the GD-ROM drive is. Now of course I needed to make room for the hard drive so I needed to take the uh, the laser assembly off of the GD-ROM drive and leave basically just 
the circuit board and the enclosure, which leaves just enough room for a hard drive there, which is really nice. I can have it inside the, heart, the Dreamcast, and there's no indication from the outside of the Dreamcast that it's been modded, which is awesome. It looks really clean. Now, you might ask, well, why did I remove the laser assembly from the GD-ROM drive instead of just removing the entire thing? Well, the Dreamcast actually will not boot up without the GD-ROM drive attached, so I needed to leave at least the circuit board attached. Now, there, there is a way around this. I'm, it, it involves more soldering, but why do that when I can just take the laser assembly off the GD-ROM drive and leave that attached and leave the circuit board attached? So obviously there are downsides to the IDE mod. Obviously, like I said, it's a very difficult mod to do. And in addition to that, it does not have 100% compatibility. Uh, the GDMU and the USB GDROM, I, I believe, are close to 100% compatibility. They don't have any issues running any games. But the IDE mod, not so much. It's about 85%, which is not too bad. But hopefully that will improve in the future, and it should. As, as future updates to the software come out, the compatibility should improve, and hopefully, eventually, it will get to 100%. Currently, it is not 100%, but most of the games that do work, work fantastically. The load times from a hard drive are amazing. Now, the best example of this is with Soldier of Fortune. Soldier of Fortune is notorious for extremely long, agonizingly long load times on the Dreamcast. Now, the game has very frequent load screens as well, so that doesn't help either. Now, the load time, to give a good example, for the initial load screen is about a minute long, if not a little over a minute, which is... that's just horrible. Now, with the hard drive, you can actually load that initial load screen in 15 seconds on a 5400 RPM hard drive, which is amazing. That is a drastic improvement, and it actually made the game playable for me. When I played through the game initially, I played through maybe the first few levels, and I just could not stand those load times. Just the constant long load screens were driving me nuts, and with the hard drive, it completely changed the game for me. I was actually able to play through the entire thing in a few days, and I loved it. And it's actually one of my favorite games on the Dreamcast now, all because of the hard drive mod. It's amazing. So let's talk a little bit about the software that's used with the IDE mod, which is called DreamShell. Now, DreamShell is essentially a custom operating system for the Dreamcast. It actually emulates a desktop PC operating system. It has a cursor, it has a desktop and applications and different things like that, which... You know, it's not ideal for a game controller. You can actually use a mouse and keyboard with, with it, which is seems to be what this was designed for. So I, I really don't get why uh, SWAT, the guy that actually developed the software, went with this, this interface. But you do get used to it after a while, and it's actually fairly nice and easy to use. Uh, the ISO loader, which is what you load the games with, is, is not so great. Uh, navigating, it's like a, it's like navigating Windows Explorer. It's not s ideal. Uh, but the latest version of DreamShell has a really nice feature which allows you to make shortcuts to games on the desktop, which is really nice. And you can customize this. You can make uh, put cover art for the different games and customize the names and things like that. And another reason this is really nice is because the games require you to fiddle around with some settings in order to get them to work. And when you save a shortcut, you save the settings for that game along with the shortcut, so you don't have to change those settings every time you want to play a game. So this is really nice. You can figure out what settings work with a particular game, create a shortcut, and you're all set to go. You never have to fiddle with those settings again. And this is really nice, and it actually looks really cool with the, all the different cover art on the desktop of DreamShell. So anyway guys, this has been a look at my customized Dreamcast with a custom paint job, a region free BIOS, and a hard drive mod. Like I said, the hard drive mod is not something you want to perform if you're not very skilled with soldering, but it is definitely something to consider if you are and don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a GDMU or a USB GD-ROM. Now the requirements, like I said, just an IDE cable that you solder to the board, and if you want to replace the GD-ROM drive altogether, you're going to need a custom BIOS chip installed so you can flash the DreamShell bootloader. 
If you do have the GDROM drive still in the Dreamcast, you can put in the DreamShell bootloader uh, disk, which will boot up DreamShell. But uh, if you do not have the GDROM drive still in there, you'll need some way to boot up DreamShell. And you cannot flash the standard BIOS chip that's in the Dreamcast, so you'll need a flashable one. So that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, it's not something to consider if you're not very skilled with soldering or modding, but it is definitely a really cool mod and works really well with the games that it is compatible with. But anyway guys, this has been my custom Dreamcast. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.